The pursuit of Goban and Breslau was a naval action that occurred in the Mediterranean Sea at the outbreak of the First World War when elements of the British Mediterranean fleet attempted to intercept the German Mittelmeer division consisting of the battlecruiser SMS Goban and the light cruiser SMS Breslau. The German ships evaded the British fleet and passed through the Dardanelles to reach Constantinople, where they were eventually handed over to the Ottoman Empire, renamed Javuz Sultan Selim. The former Goban was ordered by its German captain to attack Russian positions, in doing so bringing the Ottoman Empire into the war on the side of the Central Powers. Though a bloodless battle, the failure of the British pursuit had enormous political and military ramifications. In the short term it effectively ended the careers of the two British admirals who had been in charge of the pursuit. Writing several years later, Winston Churchill, who had been first Lord of the Admiralty, expressed the opinion that by forcing Turkey into the war the Goban had brought more slaughter, more misery, and more ruin than has ever before been born within the compass of a ship. Prelude Dispatched in 1912, the Mittelmeer division of the Kaiserliche Marine, comprising only the Gobin and Breslau, under the command of Conter Admiral Wilhelm Souchon. In the event of war, the squadron's role was to intercept French transports bringing colonial troops from Algeria to France. When war broke out between Austria-Hungary and Serbia on 28 July 1914, Sushon was at Polar in the Adriatic where Goban was undergoing repairs to her boilers. Not wishing to be trapped in the Adriatic, Sushon rushed to finish as much work as possible, but then took his ships out into the Mediterranean before all repairs were completed. He reached Brindisi on 1 August, but Italian port authorities made excuses to avoid coaling the ship. This was despite Italy being a co-signatory to the Triple Alliance but had decided to remain neutral. Goban was joined by Breslau at Taranto and the small squadron sailed for Messina where Souchon was able to obtain 2,000 short tons of coal from German merchant ships. Meanwhile, on 30 July Winston Churchill, then the First Lord of the Admiralty, had instructed the commander of the British Mediterranean fleet, Admiral Sir Archibald Berkeley Milne, to cover the French transports taking the 19th Corps from North Africa across the Mediterranean to France. The Mediterranean British fleet based at Malta, comprised three fast, modern battlecruisers, as well as four armoured cruisers four light cruisers and a flotilla of 14 destroyers. Milne's instructions were to aid the French in the transportation of their African army by covering, and if possible, bringing to action individual fast German ships, particularly Gobin, who may interfere in that action. You will be notified by telegraph when you may consult with the French admiral. Do not at this stage be brought to action against superior forces, except in combination with the French, as part of a general battle. The speed of your squadrons is sufficient to enable you to choose your moment. We shall hope to reinforce the Mediterranean, and you must husband your forces at the outset. Churchill's orders did not explicitly state what he meant by superior forces, he later claimed that he was referring to the Austrian fleet against whose battleships it was not desirable that our three battlecruisers should be engaged without battleship support. Milne assembled his force at Malta on 1 August. On 2 August, he received instructions to shadow Goburn with two battle cruisers while maintaining a watch on the Adriatic, ready for a sortie by the Austrians. Indomitable, indefatigable, five cruisers and eight destroyers commanded by Rear Admiral Ernest Trubridge were sent to cover the Adriatic. Goban had already departed but was sighted that same day at Taranto by the British consul, who informed London, fearing the German ships might be trying to escape to the Atlantic. The Admiralty ordered that indomitable and indefatigable be sent west towards Gibraltar. Milne's other task of protecting French ships was complicated by the lack of any direct communications with the French Navy, which had meanwhile postponed the sailing of the troop ships. 
The light cruiser HMS Chatham was sent to search the Straits of Messina for Goban. However, by this time, on the morning of 3 August, Sushon had departed from Messina, heading west. First contact. Without specific orders, Sushon had decided to position his ships off the coast of Africa, ready to engage when hostilities commenced in order to attack French transport ships, which were headed toward Toulon. He planned to bombard the embarkation ports of Bonne and Philippeville in French Algeria. Goban was heading for Philippeville, while Breslau was detached to deal with Bone. At 1800 on 3 August, while still sailing west, he received word that Germany had declared war on France. Then, early on 4 August, Souchon received orders from Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz reading, Alliance with Government of Cup concluded August 3rd. Proceed at once to Constantinople, so close to his targets. Sushon ignored the order and pushed on, flying the Russian flag as he approached. In order to evade detection he carried out a shore bombardment at dawn before breaking off and heading back to Messina for more coal. Under a pre-war agreement with Britain, France was able to concentrate her entire fleet in the Mediterranean, leaving the Royal Navy to ensure the security of France's Atlantic coast. Three squadrons of the French fleet were covering the transports. However, assuming that Goban would continue west to Gibraltar, the French commander, Admiral de la Perrierie, sent the Group A of his fleet to the west in order to make contact, but we know now that Souchon was by this time heading east and so able to slip away. At 9.30 on 4 August Souchon made contact with the two British battlecruisers, Indomitable and Indefatigable, which passed the German ships in the opposite direction. Neither force engaged as, unlike France, Britain had not yet declared war with Germany. The British started shadowing Goban and Breslau, but were quickly outpaced by the Germans. Milne reported the contact and position, but neglected to inform the Admiralty that the German ships were heading east. Churchill therefore still expecting them to threaten the French transports authorized Milne to engage the German ships if they attacked. However, a meeting of the British cabinet decided that hostilities could not start before a declaration of war, and at 1400 Churchill was obliged to cancel his attack order. Pursuit. The rated speed of Goban was 27 knots, but her damaged boilers meant she could only manage 24 knots and this was only achieved by working men and machinery to the limit. Four stokers were killed by scalding steam. Fortunately for Sushon, both British battle cruisers were also suffering from problems with their boilers and were unable to keep Goban's pace. The light cruiser HMS Dublin maintained contact, while Indomitable and Indefatigable fell behind. In fog and fading light, Dublin lost contact off Cape San Vito on the north coast of Sicily at 19.37. Goban and Breslau returned to Messina the following morning, by which time Britain and Germany were at war. The Admiralty ordered Milne to respect Italian neutrality and stay outside a six miles limit from the Italian coast, which precluded entrance into the passage of the Straits of Messina. Consequently, Milne posted guards on the exits from the Straits, still expecting Souchon to head for the transports in the Atlantic. He placed two battle cruisers, inflexible and indefatigable, to cover the northern exit, while the southern exit of the Straits was covered by a single light cruiser, HMS Gloucester. Milne sent Indomitable west to coal at Bizeta, instead of south to Malta. For Souchon, Messina was no haven. The Italian authorities insisted that he depart within 24 hours and delayed supplying coal. Provisioning his ships required ripping up the decks of German merchant steamers in harbour and manually shoveling their coal into his bunkers. By the evening of 6 August, despite the help of 400 volunteers from the merchantmen, he had only taken on 1,500 short tons which was insufficient to reach Constantinople. 
Further messages from Tirpitz made his predicament even more dire. He was informed that Austria would provide no naval aid in the Mediterranean and that the Ottoman Empire was still neutral and therefore he should no longer make for Constantinople. Faced with the alternative of seeking refuge at Pola and probably remaining trapped for the rest of the war, Sushon chose to head for Constantinople anyway, his purpose being to force the Ottoman Empire, even against their will, to spread the war to the Black Sea against their ancient enemy, Russia. Milne was instructed on 5 August to continue watching the Adriatic for signs of the Austrian fleet and to prevent the German ships joining them. He chose to keep his battle cruisers in the west, dispatching Dublin to join Trowbridge's cruiser squadron in the Adriatic, which he believed would be able to intercept Gobin and Breslau. Trubridge was instructed not to get seriously engaged with superior forces, once again intended as a warning against engaging the Austrian fleet. When Goben and Breslau emerged into the eastern Mediterranean on 6 August, they were met by Gloucester, which, being outgunned, began to shadow the German ships. Trubridge's squadron consisted of the armoured cruisers HMS Defence, Black Prince, Warrior, Duke of Edinburgh and eight destroyers armed with torpedoes. The cruisers had 9.2 in guns versus the 11 in guns of Goban and had armour a maximum of 6 in thick compared to the battle cruisers 11 in armour, belt. This meant that Trubridge's squadron was not only outranged and vulnerable to Goban's powerful guns, but it was unlikely that his cruiser's guns could seriously damage the German ship at all, even at short range. In addition, the British ships were several knots slower than Gobin, despite her damaged boilers, meaning that she could dictate the range of the battle if she spotted the British squadron in advance. Consequently, Trubridge considered his only chance was to locate and engage Gobin in favourable light, at dawn, with Gobin east of his ships and ideally launch a torpedo attack with his destroyers. However, at least five of the destroyers did not have enough coal to keep up with the cruisers steaming at full speed. By 400 on 7 August, Trubridge realized he would not be able to intercept the German ships before daylight and after some deliberation he signaled Milne with his intentions to break off the chase. Mindful of Churchill's ambiguous order to avoid engaging the superior force, no reply was received until 1000, by which time he had withdrawn to Zante to refuel, escape. Milne ordered Gloucester to disengage, still expecting Souchon to turn west, but it was apparent to Gloucester's captain that Goban was fleeing. Breslau attempted to harass Gloucester into breaking off. Souchon had a collier waiting off the coast of Greece and needed to shake his pursuer before he could rendezvous. Gloucester finally engaged Breslau, hoping this would compel Goban to drop back and protect the light cruiser. According to Souchon, Breslau was hit, but no damage was done. The action then broke off without further hits being scored. Finally, Milne ordered Gloucester to cease pursuit at Cape Matipan. Shortly after midnight on 8 August Milne took his three battle cruisers and the light cruiser HMS Weymouth East. At 1400 he received an incorrect signal from the Admiralty stating that Britain was at war with Austria, war would not be declared until 12 August, and the order was countermanded four hours later, but Milne chose to guard the Adriatic rather than seek Goban. Finally, on 9 August, Milne was given clear orders to chase Goban which had passed Cape Matapan on the 7th steering northeast. Milne still did not believe that Sushan was heading for the Dardanelles, and so he resolved to guard the exit from the Aegean, unaware that Goban did not intend to come out. Sushan had replenished his coal off the Aegean island of Don Orsa on 9 August, and the German warships resumed their voyage to Constantinople. At 1700 on 10 August, he reached the Dardanelles and awaited permission to pass through. Germany had for some time been courting the Committee of Union and Progress of the Imperial Government. 
and it now used its influence to pressure the Turkish Minister of War, Enver Pasha, into granting the ship's passage, an act that would outrage Russia, which relied on the Dardanelles as its main all-season shipping route. In addition, the Germans managed to persuade Enver to order any pursuing British ships to be fired on. By the time Sushon received permission to enter the Straits, his lookouts could see smoke on the horizon from approaching British ships. Turkey was still a neutral country, bound by treaty to prevent German ships from passing the Straits. To get around this difficulty it was agreed that the ships should become part of the Turkish navy. On 16 August, having reached Constantinople, Gobin and Breslau were transferred to the Turkish navy in a small ceremony, becoming respectively the Yavuz Sultan Selim and the Medili, though they retained their German crews with Sushon still in command. The initial reaction in Britain was one of satisfaction that a threat had been removed from the Mediterranean. On 23 September, Sushon was appointed commander-in-chief of the Ottoman Navy.